timing of that recovery, says hard to predict. We are still in a fairly uncertain environment. Finally, uh, CFO Steve Thieler did leave HP, never went to Google. HP is the acting CFO in uh, Marie Myers. I did ask uh, CEO Enrique Morris how that CFO search is going. He's saying that he's at, HP is actively searching, but the company has a high bar in that search. Guys, that's Wow, and HP shares now uh, almost 10% on those results. And Clearly some confidence, Mike, going into 2021, especially as it pertains to PCs. Uh, what do you make of that? Will people continue buying computers next year? Uh, you know, I don't know about the computer side in it, in its high numbers, but I don't think you've had too many quarters where HP has beaten the top line by half a billion dollars. I mean, it's been in a, a kind of a flat to down revenue trend overall. So they obviously were uh, RBC Capital raising its price target on Anna Plan, PLAN, raising the target to $83, up from $75 a share, PLAN. What's up, everybody? All right, let me let me start muting stuff here. Hold on. Mute. Mute. All right, we're shaking. How'd you guys make out today? I didn't do too much today, to be honest. It was a little, uh, I felt a little uncomfortable today. Yesterday was an awesome day. Today, I played, really? See, there you go, your best day so far. That's what I mean. Don't let anybody tell you you know, you know better, you know more about yourself than anybody else. Oh, oh, so in other words, wait, wait, wait. What do you mean, Joe? You, you're talking about day trading wise or, or are you saying the last couple of days set up into today? Ah, gotcha, gotcha. You sat it out. Yeah, today I played um a little bit. I played this morning um, a couple of names. What the hell did I play? Oh, parts again. Um, 
But uh, I hit the brakes pretty early. Nice. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, today I was under control. The last few days, uh, I'm not going to lie to you, I've been pretty sloppy. You know, I'm playing intraday, um, the equity. Sometimes I'll give it an extra couple of days if I want to hold for some follow through. But um, I've been playing a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. On days like today, when the market explodes to the upside and, you know, you get tactical sentiment hot, the squeezometer hot, that, that's when I like to back away a little bit. Um, but when the markets, when the indices are dead, you know, they're lower or they're not doing anything. And it gives the impression like the, there's nothing going on in the market, but underneath the hood, they're hitting things pretty hard aggressively. Uh, that's usually... Uh, where I have, you know, my best days as far as intraday is concerned. Um, you know, obviously, if they're, if they're moving off the action, too. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of the same names uh, that aren't really too overextended, you know, some of them have, or, have taken off by now, but a lot of the same names that have been catching the best action um, have given you op ample opportunities intraday. You know what I mean? So... I mean, listen, for what, for what I was kind of hoping for and expecting into year end, um, I'll take it because other than, other than what I'm doing, I don't know what the hell else, what kind of approach I would take um, with, any, with anything else. And, and let's talk about that, all right? Let's, let's talk about um, what's going on here. We'll start, uh, let's start with the markets, okay? And you know, I think, and you guys know me by now, okay? If you look at the market as a whole now, forget everything else we look at, okay? If you look at the market just off the sweeper action we've been seeing and the price action, okay? Nothing looks too exuberant. Like we've been, you know, this stretch was a lot crazier, right? We've seen... Back here, right? Pink Panther all over the place where the market just ignored and ran through. Um, you know, this looks pretty healthy. Like with everything we're seeing, we were talking about this today in the morning. Think about this, okay? And, and the action's been in the other indices is a reason why, but with everything we've been seeing, right? Flow-wise and price action-wise and some of the spec action and moves out there, if I was to tell you that, you know, the S&P didn't even break its high. Isn't that insane, right? And, or the Qs, you know, look like this. And it, what it's been, it's been the complete unwind of what we've been trading and watching for almost a decade, all right? We've been, we've been playing in an environment where the biggest bang for your buck came out of the indices and a handful of names, right? Fang, some high tech, big tech, high momentum names, but the same names over and over. A lot of us, especially a lot of us more experienced players who've been in the game a while, you, you would hear us complain about it when things got a little toppy, okay? Because it was the same thing. Every time the market would break out, they'd be hitting the same names, right? Microsoft, Facebook, Apple over and over and over again. And what we've been seeing now, catalyst being the vaccine news, okay, um, but it kind of stemmed up post-election. We're seeing an unwind of that, right? So the opposite of that would be that the major indices like the NASDAQ, the S&P 500 would lag, right? The indices that were lagging for the past, past decade, like the small caps, right? We were talking about this. That's, right? That's the index that's really heating up, right? Small caps in the Dow. And instead of a handful of names, right? Like an Apple and all the money just pouring into, into these big names leading the market higher, it's the complete opposite where they're hitting everything else they've ignored for years, right? Everything they've ignored for years, all these names 
you know, we used to draw, I used to joke around with a couple of buddies of mine. We would look at these stocks and these charts and we used to say, what's the point of these things being publicly traded? Nobody even knows they exist. These stocks have done nothing for ages. They've been in a downtrend, you know? And that's what we're seeing right now in, in just a small sample size, a tiny, tiny sample size, you know? So that's why I, I stress to a lot of you out there who feel like you get FOMO or you miss the boat or and anything like that, right? You got to understand if this is a major rotation that's happening here, this doesn't last a month. You understand? Think about how long we, we sat through the other way, right? I'm talking about a decade. You're talking about years, right? At the least, at the least, probably a year. So my point being is we, if that's the case and the rotation is for real, we will get ample opportunities in the future off pullbacks, or shakeouts, or if you name it, finding entries in, in all these names. And the beauty of it is there are so many of them. There are so many of them. It's not like you miss an entry on an apple off a, off a correction or a pullback and it's gone, right? How many times has that happened, right? Now, you don't have to worry about just one stock and missing an entry. Because if this rotation's for real, you, you, you guys, some of you guys haven't been around long enough to understand what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, you're talking about names upon names upon names that can set up and, and catch action, you know? So again, I don't wanna jump the gun. We'll see what, you know, it, things look like going into next year. But that's the one thing I would definitely stress to you guys is if this rotation's legit, okay, and has staying power, okay, there will be phases where it goes out of favor, but ultimately those will be opportunities where they set up again, all right? And, and that's what we have to look forward to, all right? So that's what's going on in the overall market. The problem we're running into and a lot has to do with the vaccine is people are, you know, players are getting bulled up, right? I didn't think we would get players as bullish as they are with this type of rotation happening. Because if you guys remember what I told you, when NASDAQ went out of favor last time in the 90s, you know, every trader's eyeballs were glued to these NASDAQ names and they ignored everything else. And now because of the vaccine, and again, maybe it's still early yet, right? We're only a month in. Um, everybody's picking up on this rotation, this reopening trade, uh, and it's led to a lot of heat over a short amount of time, okay? And, you know, you look at, if we, if this continues into year end, which, I don't see how, again, we spoke about this, right? There, there's got to be some black swan or catalyst for really to unravel this into year end, okay? Can there be dips? Yeah, I'm sure, you know, we go into something similar uh, sooner than later than we've just gone through, okay? Something like this, where we just got to breathe it out a little bit to cool things off. But what we should see is we should see money being put to work on every little dip uh, going into the Fed meeting, which is next month, okay? Again, barring a black swan, and that's why they call it black swan. We have no idea what that could possibly be and where it may come from, all right? So until we see different, um, the playbook, again, at least for me, is the same. You know, try to stay away from chasing the extension on days like today, right? So you don't want to buy those reopening names when they've been up for the past three days and everybody's bullish again, okay? You want to try to wait for down days, pullbacks. And my advice is to, to stay, to still remain quick, especially from this point, you know, especially from this point. Because if you do get caught in the wash, all this is a mirage. 
right? Any upside is going to be a mirage. So I think we, especially for you option players, you stay quick, right? If certain names you feel a little more bullish on, you want to give a, a long release to, like I know you guys are all junked up on this Tesla, which, you know, has been ridiculous for the past week. Uh, you know, ridiculous action. Yeah, I mean, who, who am I to tell you that, yeah, you can't get in the middle of multi-million dollar sweepers when they're bombing the daylights out of this thing and you just, you see the momentum coming into it, you know? You see the momentum coming into it. Um, but for my style, like Tesla, I'm not day trading equity in Tesla up here. That's just not my thing. Uh, what I like to do is I like to stick with the underbelly names. And that's why I didn't really do too much today. Um, but, you know, a lot of these EV plays, uh, a lot of these under the radar plays, we spoke about this like PRTS, you know, even this Vroom, I got lucky again today um, where it just popped two bucks and then faded. And I'll be willing to play this again. You know, I'll be willing to play it again. I just, I'm not going to chase it, you know. As long as it stays down here, I'll play it. I'm just not going to chase a couple day move. Um, but you know, other things, yeah, I wish I would have held longer, right? This thing got away from me pretty quick. I'm lucky I even got a day trade out of it. This MGNI that was pretty um, excited about the action. So, but that's the game, you know, that's the game. Um, I spoke about PRTS, like, you know, th this thing, it hasn't even done anything crazy yet, uh, but just the buying that comes in when it's dead, this thing is dead outside of sweeper activity. Uh, but they're acting like they got something up their sleeve in this thing, right? It's a bull risk reversal. You know, you don't see that type of action in, in these names. All right, so that's, from what I see, that's the game plan up until the Fed and why the Fed, because who knows? You know, if we continue to grind higher and we continue to see this crazy appetite for spec buying out there, it's insane, insane, okay? I don't mean to sound like Jim Cramer, but especially in the option market, some of this, um, this buying in like the NEOs and the EVs, they're just, they're nuts. It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. I've never seen... Like usually secondaries were things you shied away from. You know what I mean? Like a company announced a secondary, right? They add stock out there, whatever the case, players would shy away. The stock would be weak and then the stock usually would go dead for a period of time. They, they lick their chops. They can't wait to come in and buy the plug weakness off a of secondary. They can't wait. Yeah, these, these, what do they call it again? No, SPACs, SPACs. It's just, you know, there's, you can see there's craziness going on. And that's the heat out there right now. The overall market, from what I see, is not, it's not that crazy. It's not that crazy. You're getting healthy rotation. It's not like everything's going up. You know, again, look at the S&P 500, right? I, any any barometer you use, look, you know, here we were a bit stretched, right? Here, Pink Panther, we're a bit cooked, right? Here, we had a rally off the election. We needed to breathe. We did. So it's been healthy. There's no heat there. The heat is, yeah, in, in these things that I just, I have no more words for. I, I really don't. I have no more words for. They did it again today. They um, what's that one that announced the secondary that they were buying? BLDP, right? They bought it today. They bought it into the secondary weakness. All right, so would you be shocked this thing breaks out, if not this week, next week, and all of a sudden you're looking at a $30, $40 stock? I mean, the, the list of these names, right, BE, it almost looked too easy, right? It almost looked too easy. The BE catching action... Yeah, this whole entire trip here, and then it was going to lead to a bust out like this. It almost appears too easy, and it, it's still playing out. So, you know, that's that's why 
I think it's in our best interest. We continue to, like we were saying, Tree, we move the chains, you know? We move the chains. The chains. The, the one thing we want to try to avoid, all right, is when it's time for a yank, I'm not talking about a crash, but I'm talking about a healthy yank. This market could easily pull 10% and it'd be totally healthy, okay? You don't want to get caught knee deep in calls. You want to have the ability to have cash and attack that, right? Because that's, that's where the money's made with confidence, all right? So th the example recent that we got screwed on, okay, was pre-election, right? Pre-election. We got screwed because of the binary event and the election there got away from us a bit. But look at, look at, you know, this market didn't even go anywhere, big picture wise. But look what this pullback set up here. Just think about the amount of names and what they did in this rally. Forget about the market, right? Forget about just the indices. I'm talking about under the hood. How many names could you guys give me that have had ridiculous moves in this rally? So that's the beauty about having cash for something like this. You know, that's the that's why it's worth it. That's why it's worth it. On top of not, you know, not giving back a chunk of your profits because that's what we want to avoid um, doing. All right. So again, not to sound like a broken record, but we want to stay quick. Right. You want to take a shot and hold a name a little bit longer, try to get lucky. I can't blame you one bit, but just understand the risk that comes with it. You know, stay a little smaller so you don't get hurt and, and no harm done. You know, no harm done. And big, again, net net, out of all the names we're seeing right now, we're in and out of them playing, you know, if, if we can make some money doing it, and still be in decent shape when the pullback comes, that's that's the goal. You know, that's the goal, all right? Because everybody's participating here and making money. Um, and when it gets easy, you gotta, we got to be careful. We've been talking about this. we got to be careful. Uh, one more thing I wanted to hit on, and then we'll look at a, a couple of charts like we do Tuesday, uh, indicators, uh, just to keep you guys up to speed. Um, I've been talking, especially members, I've been talking about spot, right? Spot, I've been using that word a lot. And what I mean by that is this, okay? Right now, it, it's pretty clear, right? There's rotation out there. When the cyclicals are hot, that's where all the momentum is, right? Every little fade intraday gets bought up and they rip them, okay? And at the same time, the tech names, okay? are likely going to be in breather mode or pullback mode. All right. So we just have to acknowledge that. Like if you want to, if you want to buy a name like AMD, okay. And you're looking to stay tactical. Okay. Try to buy dips instead of chasing the move, you know, cause I see a lot of people frustrated by an AMD and this is not even this is not even that bad compared to some of the other tech names that have been heavy, you know? So just all these names, try to look to buy pullbacks and by accident, a lot of these names bounce anyway, right? Like we've seen here, Etsy got hot, right? Now you're gonna get a little breather, you're getting a little pullback. If you're interested in the Etsy, right? If you're looking to play the Etsy, you're looking to stay in the bottom of the range here instead of chasing the move, that's all. And the same goes on the other side. Now, the, on the other side, the ro the reopening names, you've been you could get away with mistakes a little bit more because they're acting healthier. A lot of money is going into these names, but you it's still probably prudent if you're going to look to even just trade a Boeing tactically. Wait for pullbacks, right? Wait for pullbacks. So instead of you know chasing this wait for a down day, and then throw a ticket in there if you're interested. You know, so this way you have a chance. These snapbacks have been healthy. Um, and if you're just playing tactically, um, you know, you got a better shot of cashing a ticket. Better shot of cashing a ticket. 
one more thing. Well, this could ultimately also set up a whole different way, but we wouldn't complain. These, all these tech names that are kind of stuck in the mud now, if this continues what we're seeing right now to the end of the year, we may have a decent trade in all the hot growth names going into early next year. You know what I mean? So it could work out either way. You know, it could work out either way. We just want to keep our eyes open and, and don't build up too much of a bias. I know we got mixed feelings here. Some people rather trade, um, you know, the hot names. They move better. Um, some people are sick and tired of it. They rather find, you know, new names, new ideas, new sectors. Uh, but either way, I think we're going to have a decent setup because not everything is going up at once. It leaves a little window. It leaves a little window. All right, let's just talk about this quickly, and then um, we'll talk about names because it's been – I don't care what the market did today. It's been all about names um, as far as action is concerned. I didn't post it. Oh, hold on. I got to refresh it. All right. So um, some of the charts we look at every Tuesday, and here are some of the key charts to keep an eye on now. Okay. Again, we gotta, we're going into tomorrow with some heat on a short-term basis we didn't have that we're going to have that now so be careful again the names that have been running that's where you want to be most careful okay because they can reversals fades all that stuff um this is probably the most bullish thing out there as far as positioning is concerned uh because a lot of you know almost everything else is is getting fried as we speak um, but this probably is the last shoe, okay? Hedge funds. We're going into year end, okay? And, you know, rather than step on the gas from here, they sold into it, right? Wait on the market a little bit, but then they got it kind of left out of, left out of the loop. If they need to chase for a variety of legitimate reasons into year end, that could be a big bonus, right? So what's that mean? Not only does it, can it translate into a melt up, right? That's the most obvious, but I think uh, better for us is the dips, the pullbacks should remain shallow. All right, so when the market looks like it's gonna whoosh and we see sweepers step, step in to soak it all up like they usually do when hedge funds are buying, um, that's going to be an indication to us that, you know, this weakness is going to be short-lived because um, these guys are stepping in um, and doing some buying. All right. What they buy is going to be a whole other story. You know, do they buy these tech names that haven't really participated as much? Okay. Because they've been selling a lot of those names prior. Or do they chase... Um, these reopening names, you know, so far from what I'm hearing, hedge funds have been dipping their beak into reopening names, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm kind of surprised that this is here based off some of the sweeper activity we're seeing, because we're seeing some big size being thrown around. And I, I almost, I felt certain that this thing was going to have some sort of pop by now and it hasn't, but we'll see. Maybe it's coming. All right, maybe it's coming. So, and, and that would be, I mean, it would just be a, a perfect finish to the year if these guys get up, again, not even above the red line, but to this vicinity. And we go into January, set up for a whoosh, you know? So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Uh, here are some of the Goldman indicators that we look at, all right? Still quite a few that are stuck on this side. So you got risk parity, you got some uh, futures positioning. I'm gonna show you another chart uh, in relation to that, uh, that's showing there's still room for them to add. But here, you know, you got a lot of the short-term stuff cooked, AAII cooked, momentum cooked. You know, even equity flows now, right? We've seen a big change there. And 
you know, some of the more uh, futures based intermediate term positioning stuff hasn't really participated. I don't follow these as closely. So that's why I, I'm kind of iffy on, you know, the VIX, obviously we know. Uh, but here's another chart, maybe to help us better understand it. All right, so this is from Deutsche Bank. They do a lot of good stuff with this stuff too. Um, so this is equity futures positioning, but this is leverage funds and asset managers, okay? So not riffraff, not Sharpies, the pros kind of in between. Um, and, you know, they have some room, not a ton, but they have some room if they want to get, you know, fully long like they did in the past. They don't necessarily have to, but they have the room um, if they decide to do so. All right, there was also one more chart uh, that I saw that was interesting. Oh, here. So this is just um, a measure of momentum and breadth. I think that's the best explanation for what we've been seeing. The breadth has been enormous, ridiculous. Um, and you could see here, you know, this is as strong breadth-wise, momentum-wise as um, you're gonna see, you know, in quite a while. The problem is, is when it turns uh, yeah, it could get a little ugly on the downside. You get that correlation to the downside. Cross asset momentum breath. All right. Anybody have um, any questions? Yeah, McElliott uh, was out again today and just reiterating uh, what he was talking about. Um, he thinks, you know, barring again any black swan event, then you never know. Uh, but Kind of what we've been talking about, uh, that the dip should be shallow. Uh, there's a lot of momentum. There's a lot of uh, performance chasing out there uh, that needs to be had. So uh, kind of what we just discussed is what Mick Elliott uh, is thinking into year end. Um, and then, you know, could set up a really interesting January uh, for a washout at some point. Yeah, so we'll see how it plays out. That's that's another thing, too, in regards to, like, swing positions. I mean, we're at the end of November now, you know? So I don't know about you guys. Like, for me, a swing is not a couple of weeks. You know, I'm looking to go out further than that option-wise. So you don't necessarily want to do that now, right? Because January could be a whole different ballgame. So I think the, the best approach is what we've been doing, uh, staying a little quicker. And, you know, if you want to roll the dice and one of these spec plays that you nail at a, a solid spot and you want to give a lease to, you know, you give a lease to. You give a lease to. Uh, just don't go crazy. That's all. Don't go crazy. Anybody have any questions on this? Hold on, because this question box I got here is useless. As soon as somebody asks another question, it... I can't see the other one. Uh, hasn't been that accurate hedge funds. Other banks have hedge funds that deal with them that you will see different readings. So in other words, you'll have um, Goldman and uh, Morgan Stanley. They have indicators that measure if hedge funds are buying, or, or buying and selling through them. This is more of a net overall reading on how they're positioned, both long and short. So you see, that's probably what you're talking about. Like you know, Goldman and Morgan Stanley will post these notes almost on a weekly basis. And yeah, they'll mention hedge funds are buying and you know, it's more of a shorter term uh, what hedge funds are doing through them. Even BOVA will do that from time to time. Like, look at BOVA. I think BOVA hasn't seen hedge fund buying in ages, you know? And Goldman is telling you that hedge funds have been doing some decent buying recently, right? So, you know what I mean? This is more of an overall reading because uh, each firm is different. They got different clients. 
Well, if this is really early bull market, what should we be afraid of? There's no, there's nothing to be afraid of. What what any time you get to a point where sentiment has is as full as it is right now, what you got to be careful of is a pullback, a correction. You know that has nothing to do with, um, you know, putting putting a knife into the bear mar uh, the bull market per se. You understand what I'm saying? So. There's no reason, I think, to jump the gun. I think you what you want to do is you want to have the ability, depending on how you play this game, right? Most of us fit into the same uh, characteristics, okay? We either tr like to trade tactically, right? We want to be really quick, right? Day trade or trade within a couple of days, week, or you build positions and hold them for a couple months, Okay. The only thing outside of that is what? Investing. And you shouldn't be doing anything if you're investing. You should be buying on pullbacks and holding, right? This has nothing to do with investing. If you're investing for years, you, know, you, you shouldn't try to get cute timing the market ever. Stupidity, okay? And the other thing is a lot of traders get caught in between. In between, meaning they don't want to be tactical, they don't want to be quick, and they don't want to go out far enough, three to six months. So they want that month or two. And that's difficult. You know what I mean? That's difficult. So, you know, when, if you're dealing in that time frame, you got to be really disciplined. And there are certain times where you can't get aggressive and put on too much risk and now is one of those times. You know, now is one of those times. I mean, we're talking about, again, adding risk. If you're holding on to positions right now, right, you should be paying attention to your risk. You should be protecting via puts, right? Or maybe you're looking for major insurance, utilizing volatility, the VIX, whatever the case may be, right? So, there are times where you we don't focus on that. We look to get aggressive and add risk. And right now is a time to pay attention to your risk. Acknowledge your risk. Okay? Because if we do get hit with a correction, it's going to sting. All right? And the other thing is, too, the other thing we got to understand, too, is that you know, we didn't just come out of a correction. We came out of the correction crash in March. So something can grow into bigger than your run-of-the-mill correction when we do pull back. You know, do you want to be caught in something like that? So again, this is, there are times where you need to pay attention to this stuff a little more closely. And now is the time. Now is the time to pay attention to your risk. Okay, for me, I don't, right now, I, where we're at now, I don't have an interest in adding any sort of substantial risk to my swing positions, to my swing account. You understand? I have no interest in doing that right now. All right, when we do get a pullback, right? And I start to see the things that I'm looking for line up into the pullback. That's when I'm going to start taking measures to get aggressive and added risk. Yeah, exactly. 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 If you look, you know, look at any, any run of the mill indicator and, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You know, like you take a, even a charter spy, right? No matter what, right? No matter what you're trying to do, you're looking to be able to start getting aggressive here, even if for shorter term stuff, not up here. You don't want to come after a move like this. So even if you got to wait through further upside, you wait, okay? But again, I'm talking about putting on risk. Let's say you're holding names. You may not want to sell everything here. 
right? You may want to put on protection. You may want to put on VIX protection. You may, whatever it may be, okay? What I'm saying is adding risk. You don't want to add major risk here. That's what you want to try to avoid. Because what happens is when the pullback comes, you're going to get wiped out. You understand? It's that simple. You know, when that pullback comes, you're going to get wiped out. Think about it, right? If you are holding on to positions and now you're looking to get aggressive and add to those positions here, okay, the market may go up into year end. And then what happens January, we come back from New Year's and all of a sudden you get one of those. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? All right, huddle. You know, and, and listen, the other thing is too, you guys are all options players. You get caught in one of those, you're done. There's no coming back from that. There's no coming back from that. You realize that? In options, okay, the, you guys aren't going out uh, nine months to a year. You're going, if you go out a month or two and you get caught in just this, okay, and you were buying into the heat in something like this, your premium is going to be demolished, evaporated, nothing left. Cup Tui, gone. A river dirty. Yeah. You know, some of you, some of you are going to learn the hard way. Options are fucking tough, man. Options aren't easy. You guys are in for a rude awakening if you think the option market's easy. Options are tough. You got time. There's a time. There's a timer on your bet. Exactly. Right? It's like a crystal ball. So if you want to find consistency, I'm not talking about one winning trade. We could all, we could all hit a big one. Okay? We can all step in tomorrow Find the next S-O-L-O, -O, roll the dice, and if it clicks, we make a nice hit. There's nothing to that. That's luck. All right? But if you want to find consistency swinging options, okay, you have to buy at certain times. You can't buy all over the place the same exact way swing trading options. Inevitably, no matter what, you may be up, you may be up more, you may be down, you're going to end up at zero. You're going to end up at zero because when you get caught here, that's it, game over. They will go to zero. You know? Yeah, I mean, I tried, listen, and you probably have experience in, and you could vouch how difficult it is. Options are, are extremely difficult, really difficult. You know, really difficult. So you want to put the best odds in your favor. Okay, that's, that's what you're looking to do when you're swing trading options, right? And when you're, the odds are in your favor is when you got a pullback, sentiments on your side, Sweeper activity starts to come in. That all tilts the odds now from a 50-50 shot, right? Like we were saying, to 60-40, 65-35. You know, and at least you got room to the upside. Up here, it's, it's difficult. And another thing that happens up here, okay, unlike down here, sometimes not everything works. To, you know what I mean? Look. Right, the market's at new highs. I bet every single one of us, you know, would be in a name if we bought back then that is nowhere near new highs right now. Nowhere near new highs, right? So we're, you know, you bought a, a Zoom or an Amazon, right? Or an Apple. You know, when even though the market's showing strength, it gets more difficult up here. It's easiest. Believe it or not, it's easiest when you're coming out of this. That's when you can throw a dart and you got a good shot of making money, right? Because you have everything. 
on your side, right? And as it extends, you have less and less on your side. But that's the difficult part, the nature of buying up here and getting aggressive up here. Leaps, honestly, I don't, I don't wanna, Aaron, give you misinformation because I don't really fool with leaps as much. You know, I, I still would, I would recommend, Aaron, you're talking about deterioration of premium, but just I, what I would recommend is treat all options and trees the same way. I don't care if you're buying leaps or you're buying weeklies, okay? Your best entries are gonna come when you have sentiment at your back off weakness, right? The more you have at your back, the, the better the washout, the, the better odds you're gonna have that you're gonna cash a nice ticket, okay? Again, that doesn't mean you can't make money you can't have a winner up here you know we can't be foolish of course you can make money but it's more difficult it's more difficult puts are a whole other story don't get me started but you guys know my feeling of puts okay and look right like look at puts like think about think about what puts would have would have done to me playing puts all right what do I be doing? I buying puts here, uh, right? I I, don't, I wouldn't even know what the hell to do with myself if I was looking to buy puts. You'd be talking. So now you lose money, and instead of being in cash, you're gonna lose money on the other side. I would blow my brains out. I would blow my brains out. Right? You see bears all over Twitter ready to blow their brains out. It's there's nothing wrong with being patient and waiting for your fat pitch. It's, it's that simple. You know, if, if you can't wait, right, find something to keep you entertained where you can hopefully make a little bit of money, but you won't get buried. Like I'm saying, right, there's EV spec plays all over the place. Play nice and easy, play small. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna touch all losers. This you could probably make money by accident. But when if you do happen to get caught, you're not gonna get buried. Yeah, puts a puts a tough. Plus, there's you I don't know, forget it. Puts a tough. I can't even get into logistics, especially those who are uh, are new to this game. Figure out the long side first, and then. You can start talking about, you know, you can start working out the, the downside. But I think, it, like, every single one of you, honestly, right? Every single one of you would probably, if I asked the question, would probably answer me, I need to be more disciplined. Okay. If you think you're going to buy puts and play the downside and be more disciplined, you've lost your effing mind. Okay, you want to work on being disciplined when you're thinking about buying puts, sit in cash. That's being disciplined, right? You're not looking for action. You're waiting for your opportunity. You're waiting for your setup. Maybe you'll develop a good habit sitting in cash, waiting for your opportunity. Instead of looking to catch the downside, then you're gonna catch the bottom and you're gonna catch the upside. Then you're gonna to top tick the market and catch the downside. Then you're in chop, you're gonna catch that too because you're gonna write calls. Then, I mean, come on, right? What are you gonna do? What are you, Houdini? I mean, you know your fat pitch. You know, you know what's gonna make you money. Sit tight. And if you can't, again, just fool around, you know, excuse my French, F around. Stay small and fool around, have fun, right? It's fun, it's fun, this game is fun, but it's not fun getting buried. <laughs> it's not fun getting buried, you know? All right, you guys got me in a rant on, on puts again. It's amazing, you sneak me right into it to get me heated. And I bet you guys are like betting on the side too. No, I bet you I can do it. 
No, I bet you 200 bucks I could get him riled up on puts. Right? Yeah, I got OT over there booking bets. Let's um let's talk about some names here. What are you guys looking at? Tesla has been insanity. Um, I know a, um, Ed caught a nice ticket. Anybody catch a, a nice ticket in Tesla? Even small? Nice. Ed, what'd you catch? So you post um when I was signing on here. What'd you have? Oh, you still you still in it? So you guys saw the um, the two torpedoes yesterday. The action even today was when Tesla gets hot. There's some there's some big boys in it. There's some big boys in it. Let's see. Yeah. What are these, these freaking commercials? Tesla uh, Twitter. Uh, so. Look, there was, where's that bet today? There was another good looking sweep today. Um, that was, where is it? This is it, right? Feb 600s. There were a couple of them. Which one's that? Oh, those are the weeklies, right? There was a weekly one for a couple of million. This one is Feb 600s. 69 and change premium. Um, this is Jan 1050s. They hit those a couple times. Opening orders. The two torpedoes yesterday were nuts. There's a, a lot of action in this thing. I mean, you can see how hot it is. So here is, wait, November 23rd. Is that it? What is this one? Yeah. Goodness gracious. Anyway, there's been some uh, big orders in Tesla. Ah, we buying puts in Tesla. I don't know where this thing's going. It scares me. These things scare me. Uh, CLF, you know, these things are heating up, right? You got this one too, that caught a little action, which is slower. CCJ, uranium. A little better spot too here on this CCJ, you know. But all all these names are just unconscious right now. You just gotta have a little patience. Look at FCX, my lord. How about that fast bet? Now he comes in, this guy. You know what's funny? If he came in a month ago, we probably would call. We'd probably make fun of him. We'd probably make fun of him anyway. Yeah, you know, I would like to, I would like a little pullback here, God forbid. So maybe I could take a, sh a little shot on TNA with time, you know? But look, look, boom, gets hot. She runs away from you. I like this TNA. I just like small caps. They've been, uh... eh, NVIDIA's just, it's tougher now, but I think, you know, as far as trading opportunities, I think you'll have them. You know, if we see some flow here that you like, you could probably buy some NVIDIA. There'll be bounces. You know, I, I don't think it's falling out of bed anytime soon. I just, you know, look, look at all the studs. Look at them. Look, you see what they look like? Look at Teladoc. See how choppy and sluggish they look? You know, so that's basically what these things, I don't think these things are going to fall completely out of favor. They're, they're too good for that. I just, they got pricey, they got crowded, and um, they're probably going to chop around. But you could see there are trades in them, you know? You just got to be quicker. So yeah, NVIDIA, it would be here if you're interested. If you see a little sweeper activity come in for a bounce, try not to overstay your welcome. You know, kind of like AMD is the tough one for me. What do you guys think about AMD? Because AMD, I mean, was hot, but it wasn't NVIDIA hot. Yeah, pass. It might take time. That's the problem. 
You know, you're going to have to sit in it. Who wants to sit in it? Yeah, I agree. I just, I wouldn't want to sit in it, you know? It looks good, though. It looks good, too. Um, yeah, Sean, VRM, I'll play it. I'll play it. As long as it stays down here, I'll keep playing it. As long as it stays down here, I'll keep playing it. You know, I like playing off of that uh, for as long as it stays there. Uh, well, you know, I was going to swing equity, honestly, Dan. I was going to hold, not swing, but I was going to hold it for a couple of days. But the one, the first time I bought it, they gave me a buck in an hour. And then, you know, I carried some over into today, and today was up two bucks this morning. So I took like a buck 40 out of it, and I ran for the hills. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, what am I, you know, what am I looking at? I'll, like Sean's saying, I'll take, you know, playing off this low, I'll take it all day long like that, you know? Because, again, it holding, it's more, you're adding more risk, no? So you got to figure it. Listen, if you're going to hold, that means, you know, you're looking for a bigger number, right? You're looking up here somewhere, at least. BWA, that has some nice action too, this BWA. This has some nice action. And this is not extended either. This is a good looking stock, uh, Ryan. They were buying Aprils uh, yesterday and some shorter term stuff, uh, but the Aprils were the best looking. Look, like this is, this is nice, no? Looks good. So yeah, especially on, on polls, you know, you get a, a down day in these things. We got a list from here to Chicago of names to keep an eye on. Fastly, did it come in? Uh, didn't really come in enough though. If they rotate into these names, that's what I would keep an eye on. You know, if these names get hot, then maybe you got to, Quick trade at a fastly. But you got to be careful. All these names were down today, right? Uh, pins, I mean, the action in pins is spectacular. You know, it's just, it's not much of a pullback, but if you like it, you could buy it for a uh, snapback. This is strong as all hell. Why is this thing not come down? Any reason? Because it just started running? I don't know. Yeah, pins is a good looking stock and the flow too, right? The flow too. They got great numbers. Doku is ready? Uh, I don't know about that. Ready for what? Highs? Uh, maybe you get a nah, I don't know, new highs then you're... If you think Doku's going to new highs, which is definitely possible if they rotate back, okay? If they rotate back, then all of these are in play again. All of them. Okay? If they rotate back into these names because these reopening plays got too hot, then all of these are in play. All of them. Yep. Zoom. All of them. S-E. SE, I mean, come on. Are you kidding me? I thought SE pulled back. Jesus Christ, SE. <laughs> uh, crowd, that didn't pull back much either, right? Yeah, it looks good. I don't know how much of a run, but it looks good. You know, might get choppy. SE's not shipping. Are you guys joking around? Don't do this to me again, please. SE's a gaming company. Yeah, no. I can't get into SE again. I promise I can't get into it. Uh, GRWG. 
Oh my God. I haven't looked at this in a couple of days. You gotta be kidding me, right? You gotta be kidding me. You know, I wanna, how about, let me ask you a question. You guys know, but these are SPACs, right? I don't wanna buy a SPAC. I wanna buy a real company, but I wanna, I wanna buy, I'll tell you what I want right now. I want a little guy, you know, a little guy that I can buy a nice chunk of equity, right? I could stop myself out if it doesn't start moving, um, but maybe I get a little lucky. Yeah, you know, if it gets hot, it can move. But these, you know, I was looking at like these guys, IPOB, like there was legitimate buying in this thing today, February calls. But these are uh, Paliapatia's uh, back plays, right? Can it, can these things move again or they're dead? Like, I don't know these specs. I don't know, you know what I mean? I don't know what these things, they don't make much sense to me. What are they, like venture capitalists? Yeah, this looks like, this one um, is more of a spec play. It has spec flow, uh, but you can see here, I like the setup here better because it's laying on the ground dead. You know, so you got a shot of um, a pop out of there. Um, but quality of flow, this one's catching better looking action. Like this is what they bought today. So if you like this IPOB, um, it's worth looking at. This is what they were buying today. And it was, it was nice action. I like the action in it. See that top line right here? The 20s, 2300, and low key, 100 lot sweeps under the radar. Ping, 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 without anybody seeing. You know, on a day that they were all dead today. So if you like this IPOB, uh, keep your eye on it um, off that action. Feb, it's not too far out. But again, real buying, real buying. I don't know which one, Kathy, Kathy's buying one of them. I don't remember which one. I get them all confused, Kev. Anybody know which one Kathy's buying? IPOB, IPOC, IPO. There's another one too, isn't there? IPOB, she's buying IPOB. So this is the one Kathy's buying. Probably her sweeping it up. Probably her sweeping it up. Um. Let me show you a couple of other names here quick and I'll take some of yours while I'm looking here. Hold on. Is this my oh wrong watch list? Uh, we spoke about airlines, right? I mean, look for a dip. You as far as quality of flow, UAL, hands down, the best. Hands down, the best sweeper activity in UAL. They fired a bazooka out in June. They sold puts out in June. Shorter dated spec action, momentum action around it. Um, but flow wise, this is the best. And then, I like one of you pointed out, there are other like save catching some decent action, you know. But UAL, you got a big guy, a legitimate guy out there or gal, um, building a, a position in, in UAL. You know, so again, forget that it's up today, don't look. There'll be dips in this thing. It's a freaking airline. You know, look, there'll be dips. So if you're interested, you're looking for dips in this thing. Even for trades, if you think you could, it might be easier stuff to trade, but uh, what else I got here? I got some momentum names for it. Uh, MGNI, now you got to watch on, look for a pullback uh, for an opportunity there. Broom, we talked about. Uh, Fubo Tree likes this one. Already had a nice move, pullback. Uh, Teva, we spoke about that, right? That's more of a play with time type of thing. But she could get hot quick, but I, I wouldn't bank on it. Uh, what else we got here? This one, too. This has earnings coming out, or they, no, not yet. SY. Anybody know this SY?
It caught some sweeper activity here and caught my eye. And you got earnings coming up here. That's the problem. SI, SY, I'm sorry. Um, it's a Chinese software name. So <laughs> who knows? All right, so that's one to watch. See what you guys can dig up on that. Uh, UTZ, that's been a name catching action, underbelly name. This is like a, a retail name? What the hell do they do? Potato chips? Come on. Oh, Jesus Christ. Pretzels? Yeah, I mean, catching action. A lot of stuff like this catching action. A lot of stuff like this catching action. Uh, oh, here's another one. A lot of action, slow, slow moving, calm. This looks pretty decent too. Real nice buying in it. C-O-M-M. -M. This is a tech name, but rotation tech, reopening tech. I don't know what kind of tech exactly. All right, but a, a lot of a lot of action there. C O M M. Uh, let's see what else I got. Did I go down here yet? Four had a, a big day today. New highs. That's a good looking stock, huh? Four. Yeah, keep an eye. Four. Keep an eye on dips. Uh, which one are you talking about here? Uh, oh, Donkey Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Nice little uh, breather there, huh? Last couple days. Now, this, this should be um, a reopening play, right? With the casino. Oh, we didn't even talk about it yet. Here's, the, here's your sweeper of the day today. Caesars. My God, did they bomb them today. You guys saw that Caesars action? You bought some? Yeah, yeah. Woof. He tattooed it today, huh? Tattooed it. Here's the action we're talking about quickly. So you guys know C Z R. Definitely Sharpie action. Oh no, this was the smaller one. The Jan bet, Jan 80s, 330 grand, smaller. Uh, but here's the big guy here. Where is it? Oh. So this was the tally when it was all said and done. 4,200. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's a cannon, no? I mean, I, I'm not crazy about the spot, obviously, but maybe we'll see. We get a dip. Yeah, it was big action. Big action. <sighs> Do they ever go wrong? If what happens is if the market rolls over, they go wrong. And what they do is they end up rolling down strikes. They, they wiggle out of it to give themselves more time and soften the blow, Andrew. But yeah, they can go wrong if they get caught in a market pull. That's the risk. If the market doesn't pull, they usually cash a ticket. Hence why I love to play those missiles coming out of a pullback. You know what I mean? You guys don't remember in March, I was like, I had eight, nine positions deep. You guys don't remember that, huh? McDonald's, Trip, Boeing. I had every piece of garbage on the face of the earth. Oh, God. Um, plan came later, right? Plan pizza. Oh my God. There were so many of them, man. There were so many. Look at Mickey D's. Where'd he hit him? 
right? Mickey D's was into the lows. Look, what were they? What? When did they expire? Was that October? I don't remember when. Uh... BHC, I still got a little bit of the Jan calls there. You're in Jan's, uh, Joey? From that time I rolled up. Yeah. This thing is molasses, though. Oh, my God. I wish I could trade this thing for uh, one of the high flyers that I didn't play. All right. But those were later plan, this one. I'm talking about when they first started firing missiles and Sharpies got long. You know, I was I was in knee deep. I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, I had um yeah, Home Depot. I didn't I didn't catch that one. Home Depot had a big one, a big one, a big one. I'm trying to think of the other names that I had. There was one real nice winner. I can't remember. Oh, take two. That was one of them. Take two was one of them. Good call. I forgot. Take two was definitely one that I had with it. Trip. Boeing. Anyway. But, you know, that's, you know, that's where I like to, uh, I like those missiles, you know. I just got to learn to roll or hang in them a little bit better. The early ones, you know, the early ones. No, no, no. Calls, Fred. Calls. 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 I had a little equity here and there that I traded in those things around it, but not equity. No. Calls. Calls with time. They were all with time. All with time. Yeah, they were, there was a ton of, ton of action back then, too. A lot of new setup, new names. That's where the net came out of. There were so many. You guys think these EV names uh, run more? I like Teva. I think it just, you might need a little bit of time, but I like the Teva. It just, these things got so hot to, they, like now there's not even, oh, I got one. I got one. I got one that hasn't, uh, that just got hit. Hold on. It's not on here because I didn't update it. Shoot. I played it. Hold on. Where is it? What's that? Hold on. I think it's C L S K. Yep. This one. If you think they're going to remain hot, that means there's going to be, they're going to give birth to some new plays. And this thing, if they, if they notice this thing, you're talking about, you know, you're talking about 16 bucks at six bucks. Pink. Yeah, again, the risk, the risk, Fred, is that the momentum runs dry in the group. That's the risk. But if you guys think they're going to stay hot to the end of the year, you know, you got a good shot that they discover this. Yeah, and small float, small everything. You know, small float, small everything. LCA, I never heard of that one. Let me see, LCA? What the hell is this? SPAC. This has got to be a SPAC. Gambling? Casino. A SPAC casino? Jesus. Tillman Fertitta. Wow. Damn. There's so many. This is turning into Allah 1999 all over again. I like it, Sean. I like it. Seeds. You know, try to get a dip, story of my life, but I like it. And the, here's the other one, Sean. Six. Shamu. Six and C's. You know, how about, how about, look, look at us, we're DeGeneres, we're talking SPACs. Anybody catch any of these real names? Like Disney that got tattooed? Anybody catch any Disney? COVID's done. Forget it. Stick a fork in her. It. 
It's over with. Yeah, Joe Biden found the cure. Um, BE, I made some decent money with this one. BE. You know what it is? It, it took uh, some time to materialize. It didn't just explode. All the rest of them, they just explode on your face. Yeah. But BE, I like a lot. I like a lot. Flow-wise, I don't know the company. Is PLTR still going? I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. What is this? Like, why? I mean, come on, what is this? Jesus, that's the SPAC play of the last couple of months, SBE. Talk about missiles. And what do we say? We don't know what they do, do we, SBE? Do we know? Oh, this is EV2? There you go. Jesus Christ. My God. I read, I read an article, was it Bloomberg or Barron's, that there is, you know, because of the liquidity out there, right, because of this, we looked at it, remember Sunday? This is the chart. You want to know why things are insane. But because of the liquidity out there, there is so much demand for, like, this whole EV space that they can't get, there's too much money. They can't get enough of them. They can't get enough of them. That's why any name they find, you know, they it just, they get, they bum rush these things. Everybody wants to own a ton of this shit. I guess that's why Neo goes up every damn day. Yeah, and Tesla. But look, look, this is, you know, so like that's I got a buddy of mine that says like here, right? This you want to know when the spec the spec action comes to an end, all this momentum comes to an end. How is it going to come to an end with this like this? How? 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 There's so much money out there. It's going to find something. It's going to find something. All right, they rigged the game. So well, this is what happens when you rig the game. Xped, you know, don't even ask me about. It. I don't know what. Again, I loved it, but uh, you know that was in the twenties. I can't. This thing's over seventy bucks. Do you realize this? Do you realize where we had this thing? Nobody ever heard of it. Do you realize twenties? I know, tree. Me too. Holy cow. And this LI too. This LI was my favorite. You know, the expat was a bigger winner, I think, percentage was. But like this LI, the action in this LI was nuts. Nuts. Yeah, these things were the start of it. They were the start. Right here. Look, right. This whole breather here, they tattooed. All right, look at this spot. Like the first time we played, it was here. That was the first time we caught action. Never heard of it in my life. All right, they had a nice little rally and then this breather just risk reversals. They just annihilated it, annihilated it. And look now, we only knew. We only knew. But uh, so that's but that that's what I'm excited about this time of year. I like the uh, I like these spec names. You know what I mean? Like five, looking for the next one with flow. I like that stuff. So that's I kind of got my hunting hat on. Uh, TNDM, yeah, there was a little sweep, but nothing, nothing even worth talking about in it today. Wow, they did do some selling here. Why, just biotech selling in general? Or they had news? Weird. Remax. Huh. 
Wait, that can't be it. Hold on. Oh, it's an ETF you're talking about. Metals, wow. All these commodity things are heating up. Metals for EV. You got all these car part, uh, right? Names heating up. It, they, this thing, this EV stuff's got antennas into a million different sectors. That's why we got to do homework too. You know, you think a name is nothing. Oh, it's some bullshit uh, muffler company and it's tied to EVs. MP. Oh, I know this MP. It caught some action. MP, MP materials. What is that, Jordan? You know what it is? What is it? Karg. Car sales. There you go. Got some nice action today, this Karg. Man. God forbid we get a little pullback too, huh? God forbid we could get a little pullback. I'll take a down day at this point. I'll take a freaking down day. Wow, Cree got hot. They're tied to all this Cree? I guess that, like NXPI? Oh, man, that got hot too. Damn it. Stock pickers market. Jesus, where did this NXPI get so hot? Son of a gun. Yeah, LRCX. I think I'm the only person in the world that lost money on a trade in LRCX in the last couple of months. I don't know how I had a losing ticket in this thing. You too? Oh, God. Look at this. That's why, you know what I mean? You got to buy with time. You nitpick these great stocks that catch action. You... Yeah, this it's a beast, this thing. You buy dips, it's a beast. As long as the market doesn't crash, this thing comes raging back. Thing's a stud. LSCC, the next NVIDIA right here. Yeah, a lot of good looking names, a lot of good looking names. CTVA, this is another one I wanted to get my hands on. I couldn't get my hands on, look at this. Now you got Bova touting this CTVA like it's the best thing since sliced bread. You know, this is chemicals, ag, right? Yes, WDC is in play, without a doubt, Tony. Without a doubt, it's in play like the Micron. STX should be, yeah. Yeah, and these things are cyclical. They're cyclical. Pink Panther, the mark, which, oh, this, um, it's this. Hold on. It's MS. I don't know what the hell the name is of this thing. Later, Tree. Have a good night. Pink Panther. I thought you meant the red here. Um, these things. TDOC is tough. This is tough. If you're going to play it, you got to buy weakness and you got to sell the rallies because it's out of favor. Out of favor. You know, just try not to chase green. You'll get destroyed. Goldman Sachs, all the banks are in play. Now they're extended, though, George. I mean, I can't buy them here. Somebody swept fast today. You saw that with time? Oh, my God, it closed at the highs, too. Energy names they've been buying. Yeah, I can't get myself to buy them. Um, BP, probably one of the better ones, flow-wise. Um, but you name it, cop they've been buying. X is unconscious. Look at this. 
Valet, they every single day they buy valet. Every day. Every day. Uh, GDX, I don't know. I don't know. I probably would stay away for now. You know why? Because the, they're likely going to sell gold. Gold is going to be heavy. And that's probably going to weigh on GDX. Yeah. So I would stay away unless you want to buy with time because it, it gets oversold, you know? But if you're looking for momentum, uh, you got to stay away from it. If you're looking for momentum, you know? You got to go where sweepers are tattooing. And that's reopening, um, you know, all the names we've been talking about. EV plays for spec plays. You know, the 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 other things, the other names, the the software names, you we can play, but we just we got to catch them at the right time off um, some quiet, you know, off a little bit of a pull. Like you guys are talking about uh, shop. You know what I mean? You got to try to buy these things when they're dead off a pull, and you know you got to trade them though. You get a little greedy, who knows? And it still looks good, shot. You know, it still looks good. Still looks good. It's just all the money was crowding into all these things. You see this? That's all they were buying forever. All right? They wanted nothing to do with Valet, X, Micron, WDC, they didn't, they weren't even, they wouldn't, they didn't even know they exist at the time. And now it's being unwound, that whole trade's being unwound. So now all of these portfolios that crowded into Fang and all these hot names for years, they got it, they're rebalancing. So what they do is they sell some Fang or they sell some shop and they buy, you know, a reopening or a commodity play. They don't care, COVID's running wild because there's vaccine news now and you know they're not buying like us for the next month you know they're buying uh to hang on to for a while so they're buying up all these reopening plays one more thing i wanted to let you guys know especially you guys who are members the one thing i'm really keeping a close eye on okay that really can change the picture to all this that we're seeing that we're worrying about you know things getting too hot the stock to bond ratio, okay? Remember, we've been looking for that spike. Remember we were talking, let me pull it up so you know what I'm talking about. Tonight might be the night. I know I've said that before, but. All right, this, so you see it's been banging its head up against which usually is a sell signal, right? Meaning people are leaning too much to the equity side as opposed to bonds, okay? But the rare occasion you get this, like in 2016, see that major spike? Look at this major spike. See how it, nothing even comes close to looking like that? And the reason why that's institutional buying coming out of bonds and into equities. Now, there are some signs of that. There are people who are calling for that. I mean, I've been looking for it for a while now. So, I mean, it's nothing new, right? But we'll see. And what that changes is it changes a lot. It changes a lot because now you got institutional money coming into the market. <laughs> you think hedge funds buy dips? Forget it. Forget it. They did. They usually, what usually happens is um, you get a little minor pullback, like not even a correction. You get just a minor pullback, you know, like something like this or even something like this. That's why we were looking here for it. And then you'll see that big spike come in. Now, 
this is not off a pullback, but look, right? You had a little breather here. You know what I mean? You had a little breather here. It doesn't feel like it, right? You know what I mean? It doesn't feel like it. It feels like this should be up here somewhere because of all the spec action is out there. That's what it feels like. It feels like the S&P 500 is right here right now. Like this market, you know, totally normal. So that's why I'm trying to keep myself grounded and we'll see if we get that spike, that could be a big deal. You know, a big deal. So we'll see what happens. We're looking for it tonight and we'll see what happens. Yep. We'll see if they get crazy. But again, you got hedge funds, no matter what, hedge funds are going to probably do some shopping. They'll hold things up for now. All right. Tomorrow's the Fed minutes. Tomorrow's the Fed minutes. Anybody? I think so, right? Two o'clock. So there you go. You got another catalyst out there. We'll see what the hell happens. Yeah, they bought some LQD. Maybe the Fed has something to say about that. You know, it got a little dicey here, LQD. And then ripped. Uh, we'll see. This it could play out so many different ways. But we know what to look for anyhow for the next couple of weeks. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay. Stay safe. And I'll see you guys when we get back. The rest of y'all see tomorrow. I'll be there. Have a good night, everybody.